Shalom, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Radash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the whole for elect. Yeah, just trying to keep up with this whole uh, Sabbath meditation thing that I do, try to do every week. And something I was meditating on for the past couple of days after the Purim, well, I'll let this scripture speak for itself and then I'll uh, we'll get into the video, but this is Psalms chapter 30, uh, 133 and verse 1. It says, a song of degrees of David. It says, behold, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to, to dwell together in unity, right? And that's what we had at the, at the Purim uh, this weekend. My my church, uh, we subbed our Purim over this weekend in the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem And that's very true. It says, how beautiful or how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and not just unity just like you know niggas or whatever but unity in the spirit and power or unity in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You see this is what we have here with the with the brethren the unity that the brethren have that the Lord gives you is something that this world doesn't have. If you apply and look at how uh, the world comes together for their you know get togethers whether it be christmas even though you know this past christmas and thanksgiving nobody ain't really get together but still you know just thinking about the past i remember those you know thanksgivings that i used to celebrate in those christmas when family members would get together and it was fake it wasn't real you know you know everybody would talk and seem more happy and merry you know during the festivities or whatever but then afterward people would talk shit about each other you know, I remember my family members after the, uh, you know, it was all said and done. They would talk shit about whoever was at the party saying, oh, look at what she was wearing. Or look at what he was wearing. Or look at what he said. But when they were here, you were all happy, jolly with them. But then after they leave, you talking shit about them. And me as a young man growing up seeing that, I always kept my, my uh, kept silent about that. But it always bothered me. Why do you treat each other like that? Like, why do you sit here and act all nice to each other? But then on the backside, when everybody leaves, you talk shit about each other and laugh at each other. Like, why? So then why would you even be around each other if you don't like this about that person or that about that person? Why would you do those things? And when you come, when Yahweh Bashim Yahshua brings you amongst brother and brings you amongst unity, the proper unity that our people are supposed to have, there is none of that. There is no backstabbing. There is no talking about somebody behind their back. It's just... You're getting a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven is supposed to be like. Men that care about your spirit, that men that care about your soul. You know, men that are not just sin, they're saying, oh, this is my homie, this is my dog. No, men that actually care about you and want to see you endure and make it unto the end. Men that actually care about you and that will actually correct you according to the scriptures. That's what Yahweh Bashim Asha has brought us into. I'll read that again. It says Psalms 133. I'm sorry, Psalms 133 and 1. It says, Behold, how good is it, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity, right? To, to, to dwell together in unity in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Asha, to where what? You don't have to worry about another man lo probably looking at your woman. Now, we didn't have no woman amongst us when we were celebrating the Purim, but still, you know, I remember seeing those type of things when you have the uh, Thanksgiving feast or, um, get out of here. Or the, um, you know, the Christmases or whatever, when people would, you know, bring their women or whatever. And, you know, other men would be eyeing down this man's woman, you know, eyeing down being covetous, looking, lusting after what this man has and things like that. You don't have that amongst the brotherhood, man. You have nothing but true, honest love amongst brethren. There is no, no lust for what you have. There is no maliciousness, no evil, no nothing. It's just sincere, honest, and truthful love amongst the brethren. And this is not this is something that no man should neglect if you're in this ministry, if that if you're in this truth. Like the scriptures say, neglect not the assembly of the saints. If, roughly paraphrasing if I'm if I'm not mistaken. It's a beautiful thing to be amongst brethren to where you don't have to worry about this man having an evil eye towards you, to where you don't have to worry about this man having any malicious thoughts towards you or anything like that. Men generally care and want to see you do right in life here. You know, there's no there's no evil thoughts. There's no nothing like that. And then what you're seeing here is a glimpse of the kingdom. And what you're also seeing is a glimpse of the love that Yahweh Bashem Yahshua has among us, uh, has for his elect. Lord's will be a part of that. 
what you're seeing is the love that Yahweh Bashem Hashem has for his people, how he wants good for his people, how he wants his people to be righteous, how he wants his people to conduct themselves amongst each other, how he wants his people to truly love one another and not this fake love that the world gives when it's really not love at all. Can't even say it's fake love, but they just presume to act and say that they love you when they really don't. So when you're amongst the brethren, you're amongst, you know, you're seeing what the, the Heavenly Father intended and how he intended for our people to dwell amongst each other, how, our, how, uh, how he wanted our people to love each other, how he, want, how he wanted us to, uh, you know, be around each other and to care for one another. Not like how the world is where the minute you get into trouble and they just dip out on you. So this won't be long because I'm a little pressed for time, unfortunately, but uh, Lord's willing, this is edifying through the Spirit. Just have a couple of precepts here. This is Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, chapter 25 and 1. In three things I was beautified, be beautified and stood upon and stood up beautiful. Sorry, in three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before the Most High and men, the unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, and a man and a wife that agree. And if you're looking at it now about how beautiful it is to dwell amongst brethren, imagine how beautiful it is when all, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if it's not Isaiah, the 60th chapter, or maybe the 61st chapter, where it says, all thy people shall be righteous, roughly paraphrasing. Imagine how beautiful it is when all Israel is righteous, when a man and woman are no longer having disagreements where the woman is not trying to compass a man and things like that just imagine just seeing the love of brethren imagine the love where our women are truly going to love us in righteousness how they're supposed to how all our people are going to be uh to all righteous no more trying to kill each other no more getting at each other's necks no more curses this is what being amongst the brethren uh shows you Imagine the curses off of us and just living in, in righteous peace, in righteousness amongst each other, loving each other righteously how we're supposed to, according to the scriptures. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing a little glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. And isn't that something to fight for? Isn't that something to strive for to where our people aren't at each other's necks? Doesn't it feel good? I'll be the first to tell you. I've been around, a, you know, a lot of like grimy niggas, you know, uh, part of my language. And isn't it a beautiful thing to see? To where you're not around people that you have to watch your back. I had to watch my back around people. Isn't it a beautiful thing to not have to watch your back around people? To just to sit there and just be like, I'm at peace. I don't have to worry. I don't have to sit here and look at this man and think, is this man going to do me dirty? Is he going to do me grimy? Is this man going to try to mess with my woman? Is this man going to try to steal from me? You know, you invite this brother to your house. Is this brother probably going to steal something from me? I remember those thoughts when I, uh, when I was around people in the world. I had to worry about things like that. You know, not everybody I was around was dirty, but some individuals, I was uh, around certain dirty individuals, man, especially around family members. Family members talk shit about you. I had to deal with a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot of things that, you know, just saying personally, just letting out. There's a lot of things that I don't let be known that I had to deal with that shit, and I just let it slide. Because I know how the other side of me can get. I'm not trying to sound carnal, but you know. But when you're amongst brethren in the spirit, in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Hashem, you don't have you don't have to worry about none of those things, man. It's just true peace. Matter of fact, uh, what is that piece? Of, uh, let me see if I can find that precept. Because this is what the Heavenly Father intended for our people to uh, how to dwell amongst each other. But now you try to do this around niggas, man. It is just you you dealing with scorpions and, and, and wild beasts. Let me see if I can find this precept. Uh, is it 29? Hmm. Maybe it's 27. Maybe I didn't look correctly. If not, I'll quote it the best I can. Let 
Let me see if I can find it. Okay, it's 29.11. Okay. Salakia. This is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And that's what you're seeing with the kingdom of heaven. This is what the Heavenly Father, uh, this precept uh, explains beautifully what I'm trying to pro uh, project. This is what the Heavenly Father uh, wants for our people. This is what he's given us an expected end to where our people are not at each other's throats, where we're not just being wild beasts amongst each other, you know, where we can, uh, where we can dwell in peace and unity. Like it says, you know, the, uh, things that, uh, uh, it says in Sirach that, uh, he was joyous to see the love of, uh, the unity of brethren, you know, like the curses say that we would have an evil eye towards each other. But when you come in this truth, you, you, that goes away, man. You can't have an evil eye towards your brethren. And that, that, that's a, that's one of like the biggest eases that uh, come off your shoulder where you don't have to worry about another man, your brother having an evil eye towards you. So where you don't have to worry about him trying to do anything evil towards you, man. To me, that's like two of the biggest things. You not having to worry about your brother trying to do something wicked against you and your own woman not going off. You know, if you have those two things to me, yeah, that, that just that just alleviates a lot of stress and a lot of pressure off your back. And matter of fact, that segues perfectly. Oh, no. Into what uh, this next precept. Now, this part of the chapter goes into uh, worrying about your friends. Uh, this is Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 14. It says, A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that had found such an such and one has found a treasure and that's what you have when you come amongst a brother and a faithful friend man a, a person that's going to lead you the right way the right way like i said earlier a, a man that cares about your spirit a man that cares about your soul that doesn't want to see you destroyed that wants to see the best for you and that's all and he's when he speaks to you he's speaking to you in the spirit and power of your because that's what the heavenly father wants for us he expects he wants to give us an expected end thought he has thoughts of peace for us but we have sought out many inventions. We have sought out the wrong way. But he has always intended peace for his people. I'll read that again. A faithful friend is a strong defense. And he that hath found such an one hath found a treasure, right? That means you have somebody that, that you know that you can count on that will have your back. Now, it's not sitting there saying that uh, you look at man over the Heavenly Father. No. You always put the Heavenly Father first. But if you have a, uh, a good friend, that means you have a strong defense. You have someone that you can rely upon. Nothing doth countervail a faithful friend, and his excellence, excellency is invaluable. A faithful friend is, a, is the medicine of life, right? Because what happens when you have a faithful friend? That means you trust him, that you can go to him with things. Now, you may not go to everybody with everything, but this person that, you, uh, that is a faithful friend that you confide in, you know that you can go to him. He's not going to uh, think a certain way about you. You know that you can tell him things that he won't tell anybody else about. And anytime you're around him, if you're having a bad day, especially like if you come around his brethren, you know, we all have our hell to deal with. But when you come around his brethren, that faithful friend, what well, he's like the medicine of life. Because what happens if you're, when it happens when you're sick? You take herbs or medicine to make yourself feel better. So you dealing with the bullshit of life, but when you come amongst the brethren, what? It's like the stress and everything that you have to deal with is like off of you. And like, again, that is a glimpse of the kingdom to where it's like, ah. I, just, I can breathe now. I, I can just, the water, Aki, I, I feel like I can breathe. You know, you don't even have to say nothing around, when you're amongst brethren. You could just be amongst them, and that that's, you're getting a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven, what it's like to be at peace, to be at peace amongst brethren. And that is a very beautiful thing, and that's something that we should strive to fight for, to where we, we're not fighting amongst each other. How long do we have to see each other fight amongst each other? So I could continue. A faithful friend is the medicine of life, right? When you're around a brother, you just feel like a, a pick me up, man. You just you feel invigorated. Now you feel ready to go back out and tackle life. Because, like, you know, you and him might have uh, 
holy conversation and he tells you something or you tell him something and it you know and the spirit helps you to go out and tackle life to go out and and uh, deal with the uh, endure the world in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. A faithful friend is the medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. So us, because uh, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And when you come into his knowledge, you fearing the Lord, the Lord gives you faithful friends. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright, for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also, right? I just got one final precept if this thing will load up. Apologies, I would have liked to go longer, but I'm a little pressed for time. I'm trying to actually squeeze out as much time as I can now, but Salakia. Maybe if I come with a part two, I'll come with a part two. I'll read this. This is Proverbs 6 and 16. These things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. And all these things embody what our people are today, except for the elect. The elect are, you know, going according to the scriptures, but, you know, two thirds of our people, they embody these things a proud look, a lying tongue. A lying tongue they shed innocent blood but i want to focus primarily on the 19th verse where it says a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren because this all goes back to and although we have to take the blame because it is our wickedness but you never going to escape the picture esau it all go, always goes back to you and you're always brought up even though we are suffering for our wickedness you helped forward this stuff the society that you've created is why our people have this proud look. We lie amongst each other. Yes, not taking anything away from us. We did this to ourselves. And yes, we do understand that there was a grander uh, picture of things. But still, we did all this evil to ourselves. But it always starts with you, Esau, because you're the border of wickedness. You're the one that sowed discord amongst brethren by creating the society that makes us be cutthroats amongst each other. Again, not taking anything away from us. But you have created the society and you have created a society that breeds niggas. Yeah, you know, Israel isn't, you know, perfect and things like that. But you created a society and sustained a society that breeds nothing but niggas. And these are the things, everything that the Lord hates. And you're creating nothing but niggas. Your society, and this is one of the reasons why your society or another reason why your society is going to be destroyed. Because you saw discord amongst brethren. And like we just read, there's nothing more beautiful for the Lord to see than brethren that dwell together. So just, you know, seeing this little glimpse of the kingdom, if this is beautiful, how much more the real thing when everything is beautified, we're beautified, we, our minds are perfected, we're perfected, uh, the earth is going to be beautified. If this is beautiful, how much more the kingdom to come? But I just want to say apologies for cutting this video short i am pressed for time to do something but i uh, pray this video is edifying and i pray uh you know this was just edifying and you know this lifts up your spirit i want to give all praise honor and glory unto yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem racha kodash double honors to the apostle and elders of great millstone peace and blessings to the hopeful elect shalom